69 Oldsmobile Cutlass W31. And what exactly is the W31? Well, I thought you would never ask. It just happened to come with a 350 cubic inch V8, but don't let that fool you. There were plenty of goodies backing up that engine. Things like air induction, a special quadrajet carburetor, a Winters aluminum intake manifold, dual exhaust, special cylinder heads with valves from the 455, a massive harmonic balancer so you could rev the daylights out of that engine, and a 308 cam, which was so aggressive from the factory, it didn't produce enough vacuum to support power brakes. Just think about that for a second. You couldn't even get power brakes in this car because the cam was so aggressive right from the factory. Compression ratio is 10 and a half to one, and that little 350 was rated 325 horsepower and 360 pound-feet of torque. With the W31, you could get a three-speed manual or a four-speed manual, or like this car, you could get the TH350 three-speed automatic. But it wasn't just some run-of-the-mill bargain bin turbo 350. These transmissions were built specifically for the W31. They featured higher valve body pressure, a 2900 RPM stall, and they also had six clutch plates instead of the usual five. Bottom line, they were absolute beasts. Out back, 391 gears would have been standard, but this one has an absolutely delightful upgrade to 433 rear gears. The Cutlass W31 wasn't the lightest car, but it definitely wasn't heavy either. This specific one, with its driver included, was 3,640 pounds. Even though the W machine package came with so many delicious goodies, these cars really didn't sell all that well. There were only 913 total produced in 1969. Car Life magazine tested an Olds W31 with a 391 rear gear and an automatic transmission, and it ran the quarter mile in 14.9 seconds at 96 miles per hour. Let's check out that opponent. 1974 Torino Super Cobra Jet. And how exactly did you get a Super Cobra Jet back in 1970? Well, it took a few steps. First, you had to get the Torino Cobra. It featured a Thunderjet 429 cubic inch V8 with a compression ratio of 10.5 to 1 and an Autolite 600 CFM carb. It was rated 360 horsepower. Not bad, but for only another 164 bucks, you could upgrade to the Cobra Jet. Now the compression ratio was 11.3 to 1 and it featured a Rochester carburetor? Yeah. Ford used the Rochester on the Cobra Jet. Horsepower was 370, but then for only another measly $155, you could upgrade to the Drag Pack with a set of 391 gears, or if you wanted something even more aggressive, for $207, you could get a Detroit locker with 430 gears. But the drag pack didn't have just a set of aggressive gears. That automatically upgraded you to the Super Cobra Jet engine. It was still a 429 cubic inch V8 with a compression ratio of 11.3 to 1, but now it had four bolt mains, a solid lifter cam, the Rochester was thrown out, and a Holly was swapped on there. It had header style exhaust manifolds, unique cylinder heads, forged aluminum pistons, and it was rated 375 horsepower and 450 pound-feet of torque. And if you didn't think that this car could get any better, well, I'll invite you to take a look inside, because there you will find a four-speed manual transmission. As I already mentioned, with the drag pack, you could get a set of 391 gears or the bad boy Detroit locker with 430 gears. What do you think this car's got? It's... 430. It's pretty obvious that the Torino isn't a light car, and I wouldn't even say that this thing is big. It's downright massive. This thing with driver weighs in at 4,108 pounds. A 1970 Torino Super Cobra Jet with a four-speed manual is quite the rarity. They only produced 129 total. Carcraft Magazine tested a Torino Super Cobra Jet with a set of 391 gears and a four-speed manual transmission, and that model Monster ran the quarter mile in 13.85 seconds at 104 miles per hour. But enough talk, let's see what these cars can do today. The 
W31 was able to take an early lead, but it was the Torino that took home the win, running 13.08 seconds at 107.87 miles per hour. In the other lane, the Olds wasn't too far behind, running 13.21 seconds at 104.09 miles per hour. Unfortunately, this was just a single heads-up time trial race, so that's all you guys get. I'll catch you at the next one.